All right, so welcome back to Photoshop. So today we're going to be going over basically the biggest mistake that people make when working in Photoshop. All right, so when toning an image, I would say that 99.9% .9 of all people just look at the image and tone as to how it looks on their computer monitor. So there's nothing wrong with that. But the first thing you need to make sure is your computer monitor actually calibrated. And is it calibrated and then is it set up correctly? So that's very important. If it's not calibrated, just because it looks like this is, does not mean that it actually looks like that, right? So you might see these values, but really your values could be like that all right so though you see it like this on your monitor when it prints out or goes anywhere else it might be like this because your monitor is not calibrated to a standard all right even if your monitor is calibrated to a standard one of the most difficult things to do um, especially when you've been looking at images for a long period of time is to tell where they're at meaning like is this uh, perfect is it a little bit light or a little bit dark you would be surprised when things are a little bit light or a little bit dark when you go to print or output so I have a retina monitor and and I can see millions and millions of colors but when I this goes to the internet and switches over to sRGB and goes down to 256 shades of gray instead of being 16 bit the image is going to be dumbed down it's not going to have the contrast level it's going to be a little bit off compared to the way I saw it. So I have to make sure that I compensate or I see that. So one of the things that I use is called the info palette. All right. And it helps me get me a gauge of where I'm at. So we're going to go up here to window and I'm going to go to info and bring up the info palette. Now, this doesn't come set up like this. So to set it up, what you're gonna do is click on this little thing that looks like a centered paragraph, and you're gonna go to panel options. And here, you're gonna set RGB, and I think this comes with like RGB and actual color or something, I'm not sure what. And the second one I set as grayscale, and grayscale is really the key. So now when I move my cursor over my image, you can see it reads not only the RGB values, and I'll, I'll move this in here so we can see, it's reading my RGB values, but more importantly, my K value. So K stands for black. So right now, if I go over this white, it's 3%. If I go over this darker part of the head, it's 81%. All right, when printing, you wanna hold a white with detail at around 3%. You don't want to really go much lower or it will blow out and just become white without detail. So one thing I really uh, and try to ingrain in students and people that are learning photography is to use the uh, uh, info palette. Because right now we're at 3% and I'll just darken this a little bit. And we'll come back over here and now we're at 8%. So it's really hard to tell the difference between 8% and 3%, okay, just by looking at it. So using the show info palette gives you an exact number uh, of where it's at, all right? Over here in the RGB value, it's giving you um, what, uh, if you have color cast. So right now we're in a black and white image, and you can see my RGB values are 246, 246, 246. Whenever you have the R, G, and B all the same, that means you are at a neutral gray, all right? Doesn't matter if it's good or bad, that's good or bad, it's just telling you that that is a neutral gray color, a, co uh, a gray without a color cast. So let's uh, switch over here to this bird. So right now we're at this bird and it, it doesn't really uh, have much of a background, but it's holding around 10% white. And if we go over here to the bird, that's about I'll slide this over about 92, 93. So this is an image I grabbed off the internet. I can look at this and tell you that this is gonna print horribly because it's too dense here and here 
and probably a little bit grayer than it needs to be. So I would like to see this at around three or four percent and this at around 80 percent. So I would open these areas up. And the only reason I can tell that is by looking at the K values of my image. All right, so you can see in this where I'm at right now, uh, notice it's 26, 20, 20. So it's not a neutral gray, but it's pretty close. So let's switch over to a color image. So we can see here, and I picked this image just because uh, it's kind of toned um, uh, non-traditionally. It's not bad, it's just they chose to non-traditionally tone this. So it's got uh, kind of like this kind of funky, cool look to it. So it's got a lot of red. So you can see up in my RGB value, I'll slide this over a little closer, is that you know the red value is very high so that image is so this is telling me that hey her face had a, has a lot of red in it if you're a little bit colorblind or not used to toning yet and can't see those color casts this is a definite way that it shows you um you know hey that there's too much red in this image so the k value is around 20 percent and so that's pretty good for someone of her skin tone and this is just something you have to learn people's skin tones and kind of what value they should be at to um, you know print well so and it's a lot of it's just trial and error that you, you know it happened over years so this is good uh, you know Caucasian or white people anywhere between 15 and 25 percent is usually pretty good 25 is getting a little bit dark now this is just for being traditional obviously if the face is in shadow it's gonna be darker than that and that's okay so you go here to the one last image. So I picked this image, grabbed it off the internet, just because it's way too dark, and I knew it would be too dark. So we're going to go over here to the lightest part of the dog, and it's at about 14%, which you know is pretty good. The sky up here is 2%, 1%. There's not really any detail. So we could have some spots up here where it kind of has this weird funky effect that when you print it, it falls off. And it looks like this dithered edge into a white spot. But here in the face, we're at 69%. So this dog is just way too dark. Just way too dark. So I'm going to create an adjustment layer. So what's cool about this is, is notice, now that when I hover over it, it's saying, hey, the K value in this spot was 47%, but now it's at 28%. So it's, it's giving you, uh, uh, it's showing you what you've done. So it lets you know if you've gone too far or not. So I'll just kind of like open this up and hit command I to invert that. And we're just, we'll go in here and just roughly uh, just do this real, real crudely. I'm not even going to pay that much attention. So we can see. If I go into layers here and turn this on and off, that we've we've definitely opened that up and we're getting that into where if you did want to get this printed, it's at least going to show up. If you print this, it's even going to get muddier or darker, especially in your shadow areas. So your shadow areas um, are really good the ones going to be affected when you go to print or when you get off viewing it on a computer monitor, especially if you have a higher resolution than uh, HD, which would be 1920 by 1080. Once you get over that to 2K, 4K resolutions, uh, you're really, really going to uh, dumb down. So I actually have a second monitor, and I purposely have a 1920 um, HD monitor so I can see what my images look like over there. So I can literally just drag this image and look at it on my other monitor to make sure it's going to print and look okay on the Internet. So hopefully that's helpful and do use the info palette. It will really, really, really help you in consistency in color correction.